Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Coffee Talk. Marty G with you here from USBS Uncommon Sense Business Solutions for LinkedIn Local Coffee Talk. And today I have with me my buddy, my friend, Dave Ryan. Hey, Dave, how are you? Marty, I'm really good. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Now, you're not really local, but I mean, with the whole internet thing and how everything with COVID, I've been telling people what I love about Zoom and how everything's happened. Everybody's local now. I mean, literally, you're like a phone call away, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really easy. I mean, and plus with with iHeartRadio and, uh, you know, the podcast and all that stuff, people listen to us all over. We'll get, you know, we'll get text messages or listeners from Albuquerque, Dallas, Florida, New York, Spain, uh, the Middle East. It's like we get a lot of soldiers that are from Minnesota that are stationed now in uh, Kuwait and they're like, I just listened to you. It's four o'clock in the afternoon over here, whatever. So uh, it's it's kind of cool. It's kind of a worldwide thing, but mostly, you know, we get the Minnesotans. Oh yeah, you betcha. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now I know you as Dave. Why don't you tell everybody who you are? Because I mean, I've known you for a while. You're Dave Ryan to me, but they, many people here in Eugene, Oregon, home of the ducks, don't know about you. So who are you and what do you do? Well, think of your local radio show that uh, that does a lot of fun stuff. Um, uh, we, I do that in Minnesota. We are a multi-person show on a top 40 music station. We play <clears throat> some music in the morning, but mostly we just talk, we have fun, we play games. Um, uh, we bring up, you know, uh, different topics, um, everything from, uh, you know, how do I quit my hairstylist without hurting their feelings? to my boyfriend and I broke up, but he won't move out. What do I do? Um, uh, we do fun stuff. We do some celebrity interviews and we basically, it's a fun show. So think of whatever that show is in your city. Um, and that and that's us, just the Minneapolis version. Back when I was working at Care 11 and we were doing some cross promotional stuff, I think the first time was at like a star party or something that Care 11 was promoting and KDWB, it's just in this big, music event that happens every year that you guys do, right? Are you still do a star party? We still do. Now, because um, I, I was trying to remember how we met, and I think you did. You worked at the TV station, I and did. somehow you did a story that I was involved with or something, and no, we started hanging out. I don't remember what it was, because we used to actually do some live stuff on the air with you, and we yes. and I was doing promos, and that's how we came across each other. Because that was Okay, right. Guy. Yeah. And we still do Star Party. The, the Star Party is a big concert where we take a bunch of acts, you know, like in the past few years, we've had Ariana Grande, Maroon 5. Um, we had Nelly, some retro acts, some new acts, some acts you've never heard of, some acts that you'll never hear from ever again. But it's just kind of a mixed variety. And this year, for the first time in 25 or 30 years, we couldn't do it. We were going to do a virtual Star Party and we were all ready to go. And then the events of the last couple of weeks happened and having a concert even a virtual concert just felt kind of tone deaf and just not a good thing to do. It's like, hey, there's a lot of horrible stuff going on in the world. Let's, Let's watch this concert and have a great time. You yeah. know, we all need to have a great time and that's important, but it was scheduled on June 4th, which was last Thursday. And it just, it was just the wrong time. So about a week before that, we said, we're gonna cancel it. We're gonna move it back. So we'll still end up doing it. Well, let's talk about that, and before we get too deep into this, because you've been in broadcasting for how many years? 40 years, um, 40, 41 years, depending on when you want it. I started school uh, for broadcasting in about 41 years ago, got my first job about 40 years ago. Have you ever seen anything like what's happening in your city right now with what's gone on with George Floyd? I mean, have you ever seen a nation just, just upheaval over this? I mean. What are your feelings on this? Never. Um, uh, when this first happened, you know, Minneapolis, we all like to think of it. We, we like to think we're a wonderful city full of wonderful people. And you used to live here and maybe that was your impression. And, and we like to think that we're Minnesota nice. And then, you know, the, the last few years, the incidents with, um, you know, different shootings, killings, things like that. We're like, well, that's not us. And then when I heard this one, I actually heard it from a friend of mine who works in the sheriff's department. Um, uh, I was like, oh no, my God, another one. And this time was just different because I think that all of the protests, all of the, you know, uh, um, uh, the awareness and everything just didn't seem to make a difference. But this time 
nobody was really defending the police department. Now, I have friends that are on the police force in, in Minneapolis. Uh, shout out Officer Jackson. He taught he taught my wife how to ride a motorcycle, which is pretty cool. Um, and there's a lot of good cops that I'm friends with. But if there's a police force that's like ineffective and uh, you know has a, a racist history, um, that's going to be a problem. And so it just blew up, and it just got bigger and 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 bigger. And bigger until now, Marty, it's worldwide. I mean, you've probably seen the protests, the demonstrations in Spain, in Syria, in Russia, in Brazil. Downtown, I'm talking downtown Eugene, Oregon. We've had protests and riots. Downtown Eugene. I mean, this is a little yeah. deep town, man, and it's it's come all the way here. I've never seen it. It's, I mean, you know, it's crazy. It, it is crazy, and you know, I, um, I, you know, I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado, originally, and my son is a TV reporter there. And he was out doing a report a couple of days ago. You can find him online. It's Chase Go Lightly, KRDO TV. And there's a video of him being pepper sprayed um, uh, in little old Colorado Springs, which is, you know, when I lived there, it was just your little cowboy, podunk, uh, you know, hippie town, whatever. And to see that kind of reaction in towns all over America, all over the world, is like, wow, this is no, you're right. It's, there's nothing like we've ever seen before. Right, and I've tried to figure myself. I mean, the only thing that's ever come close, I remember the first time I was working back in Denver, this is after I, I left Minneapolis, went to the Denver market. Actually, no, this is before I went to Minneapolis. I was working in news still, Rodney King, was the only thing that came close to this. It was my very first day producing a Saturday morning show, and then we had the Rodney King riot start off, but that was just one isolated area. Since then, there have been so many incidents, and I mean, you and I have talked about this incident that just happened there in, uh, in Minneapolis and people's reactions. I've gotten a ton of questions on how to interact, how to respond. I have seen such a different response from people than I've ever seen before. People are, I think, not necessarily just fed up. It's just, wh what are we doing? What can we what do? What are we now? doing and, and, and what can we do? And see, and I think as a broadcaster, um, uh, we felt like, what can we do? Because this time it shouldn't just go away. This time we don't want it to just go away. So last, here's some of what we've done. Uh, last Thursday, was it last Thursday? No, two weeks ago, Thursday, so 10, 10 12 days ago, uh, we were on the air and we were putting people on and we're saying, hey, we want to listen to you. You know, if you're a person of color, African American, Black American, call us and we're listening. So we had such a good response. And I sat there listening to people and I said, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do something totally different. So a week ago Friday, so now 10 days ago, I said, I'm giving everybody on the morning show the day off. So the three or four other people on the work on the morning show, I said, take the day off, it's just gonna be me. Oh, and, uh, and then I said, it's just gonna be me, I'm gonna play where is the love by the Black Eyed Peas over and over and over? It's a 17 year old song that yeah. rings more true now than ever, and it's very touching. And I said, not just playing the song, because playing the song is like, that's not enough. What else can we do? I said, I want you to call me and I want you to tell me what you want me to hear. As a white guy who grew up with my privilege, never got harassed by the cops, uh, never got turned down for a job interview because of the color of my skin, um, uh, and uh, tell me what you want me to hear and I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna listen and I think that was the very important part Marty is because I said call me if you've never listened to the show before here is your chance here is your here's your platform call me and we're going to listen now as a broadcaster yourself I still consider you a broadcaster yeah. at least a former broadcaster. a broadcaster we know that one of the worst things that we do as broadcasters is while somebody else is talking we're formulating an answer in our head to respond with something really clever and really profound. And I yep. said, I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going to shut up and I'm going to let you talk. So we had a lot of people, um, uh, you know, black Americans, people of color, um, call us up and say, this is what I, and there were some that were like really grateful that we were opening the phones. There were some that were pissed that it's like, it took this for you to finally do this on the radio. So we did that. That was on a Friday. Then the real rioting started that weekend. So on Monday, a week ago today, we knew we couldn't come in and just do, hey, a wacky war of the roses and you know, name that tune or whatever we normally do. So we basically did the same thing again. And uh, 
it was it was one of those things where people just wanted to have an outlet. So, right. uh, and, and then as a reminder, I don't want to get too long winded on you, Marty. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. No, go ahead. That's the worst kind of guest, but <laughs> we, we said. Well, we me said as an interviewer, I'm supposed to br- break in and redirect the conversation, but we're, we're friends, so I don't care. <laughs> okay, we're right. We are friends. So, but stop me if I get going too long. But then we also yeah. said, you know, what we don't want to do is do token little silly things that make us feel good that show our friends how enlightened we are, but are meaningless. So, but it's so funny, Marty, one of the things that I was going to bring up was like, what was really meaningful a week ago now seems kind of dumb next week. And I think that's one thing that, that we become aware of. Like, for example, last week they said, okay, make your Instagram post just a black square. Oh, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to feel really good, like I've changed something. And then people said, to all you people who put a black square on there and thought you did your part, you haven't done your part. I haven't done anything. <laughs> so, then I mean, I, think one... about that. I saw that, and what I really wanted to do, and I, I don't know if you saw, I think I forged my post, because I've been sitting mute on this for so long, trying not to say anything and not say the wrong thing or say something that would be more unifying because it is such a polarizing situation right now. And I think you com- you combine that with everybody being on lockdown because of COVID. Everybody's like in the house, everybody's on top of each other. And then you have this powder keg of emotion from someone being killed. It's like just ready to explode. So I finally put it out there and I'm like, you know, the last time someone did that where it got notoriety was Time Magazine put the, put they put a cover, it was black. That was their, that was, they, they said was, something was evil and it was black, it was a black cover. And they got so much hell for it because they didn't think about what that implication really was. It's like, well, look, I'm black, I'm yep. not evil, I'm not, what, how does that apply? That doesn't apply to me. I'm not a color, I am a person. It's a, to- it's a token, it's a novelty. And like I said, when I, when I posted uh, this other day, Truly, there are more similarities between black men and cops than we are different. Oh, did you have a chance to listen to that at all? Uh, I did not. No, I um, I didn't get a chance to listen to it, but I'd like to hear more about that. So. It's really, to me, it's the strangest thing because I started thinking about this and I was working with some of the law enforcement officials here in Eugene and I was going to try to put together some sort, of, some sort of a summit. This was after the Ferguson thing. I was trying to just get all these people together and talk within the one cop retired and the other cop that was working with him from the other city, Springfield, didn't want to do it if he wasn't doing it. So I just ended up falling apart. But my point that I made to each of them and they agreed is black men and cops, we have more in common. One, we're a minority that has a huge polarizing effect on the majority around us, right? You see a cop, you're going to slow down. You're gonna make sure you're doing the right thing, right? All the time, yep. You see a black man, you're like, oh my gosh, what are they doing? What's happening? People do it all the time. We also have, within that small minority, we have one or two bad actors that actually leave a bad taste for our minority that affects the whole majority. So you have one bad cop that does one bad thing. All of a sudden, all cops are bad. Look, I used to be a cop in the military. I have a lot of friends that are cops. I've got no problems with cops. Like I even said, I have. I used to hang with some pretty bad actors that were black dudes that were pretty shady. I don't know if I say that. Oh, I'll bleep it out later. Pretty shady <laughs> stuff. And yeah, I don't yeah. hang with them anymore, but they literally would make the whole of the black community for black men look bad. So is it all black men are bad? No. Is it all cops are bad? No. We're actually, we have more in common than we are different. We, if we focus more on the similarities where we can come together versus the differences, we, we would have so much more harmony. But we're, we're working so hard to find that, okay, look, you gotta see the difference. You gotta see the difference. You gotta see the, okay, obviously, Dave, you're pale, I'm brown. Do we need to go further than that? (laughs) We really don't. But if if we put our heads in the sand and pretend it's not there, that's the problem. And I think what I feel sorry for my friends that don't have my color, what do you say? How do I act? What am I supposed to do? Because out of fear of saying the wrong thing, out of fear of saying it the wrong way, out of fear of putting it across the wrong way, you almost are, you, you, 
you get st stifled in not acting because you don't want to say it. You don't want to say it wrong. You don't mean to say it wrong, but what 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 choice do you have? It's either say it wrong or don't say it. That's not a lot of that a lot. This, a lot. this is why I love you, Marty. You and I think so much alike, and and um, uh, I'm a little bit smarter than you. You're a little bit more attractive than I am, but so it all <laughs> balances out here in the end. Um, that's exactly what we said. We said, you know what, these conversations are uncomfortable um, because we're, as a white dude that lives in Chanhassen, I'm so careful about what I want to say. It's kind of like when you meet somebody whose grandmother just died. Right. You want to say something because you care, but you also don't want to say something stupid and I think it's kind of the same thing. So sometimes the easier thing is to avoid it altogether. And last week on the show, week and a half ago, that's what I said. This is an uncomfortable conversation. I wasn't the first person to say that, but it was. It was an uncomfortable, com uncomfortable conversation that we finally need to be uncomfortable with and talk through it a little bit. But I think you're right. I think there's a lot of people who don't want to say the wrong thing. And especially, you know, like on social media, you know, that's there forever. And if you tweet something that is not, that that is maybe not right in the, you know, a little bit off in the first place, and in five years somebody digs it up, um, uh, you know, that can be really harmful and embarrassing and shameful, but I think it is. And it's, you know, and, and I will say this, this thing is Marty, it's like, you know, I, I like Marty because he is kind of a nerd like me. Yeah. Marty and I, we had we had a double date one time. I don't know if you remember our double date. What nerdy movie did we go see? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come on, Marty. Oh. I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Oh my Powers. God. Did we see Austin Powers? Yeah, we, we went did. bowling and saw Austin Powers together. That's well, I mean, right. not me and you. I think you and I probably had more fun on that date than the girls that we were with at the time <laughs> did. But, um, but anyway, um, uh, yeah, it's, you know, and, and I really enjoy the chance to have a conversation with somebody that we're both comfortable with each other and we Absolutely. both, you know, like each other. And I think that's a good start. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I like you more, but, you know, that's, that's just... <laughs> I apologize I'm, for the hat, by the way. Yeah. I'm all color matching your logo and everything, so I, I look. That looks good. Marty's like color coordinated. I look like crap. I got a baseball cap on. I haven't had a haircut since before St. Patrick's Day. I look. It looks awful. I'm not taking the hat off. Um, yeah. So thanks for thanks for being forgiving of that. Not a problem. So are you still flying? Yeah, still flying. I uh, took my son up. Uh, a week or so ago, we were going to fly over the, you know, the areas downtown that were burnt out and get some pictures to post on the morning show, the radio station website. And right. there was kind of like a, it's, it's not technically, technically called a no-fly zone, but in civilian terms, that's kind of what it was. Don't go in there because they're helicopters. They don't want people dropping shit from the air. They don't want any any problems. There's police and medical helicopters, sheriff, army helicopters all over in there. So yes, to answer your question, I'm still flying. And a yeah. uh, cool, cool little story, I took my son up and he started putting it on Snapchat. He is 19 years old. And his friends saw it, they're like, oh, I wanna go flying too. So a proud dad moment was when his best friend, one of his best friends wanted to go flying. So I took both of them up, a, middle of last week and got to go flying and and i was really proud that for the first time in years my son was proud of me so well, if you remember I, I do still have an axe to grind with you because we had known each other pretty well for almost a year and a half at this point in time and then we finally went flying do you remember what the circumstances were that we finally went flying i don't yeah i did big brothers big sisters and i had a little brother named jordan <laughs> Yes. Jordan, ever been in a plane and you're like, hey, let's take him flying. I'm like, what? <laughs> I've known yeah. you all this time. You've never taken me flying. You want to take Jordan flying? Come on. <laughs> that was a fun day. He got to fly the plane. I mean, I'm like, come on, this little kid. That was yeah, great. Jordan sat up front. He sat up front and flew yes, the plane, did. didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I, I love doing stuff like that. I mean, I, I love taking people for rides and and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. So tell me more about the show. We can find you where you said on iHeart, right? We are on uh, we're on iHeart Radio. The uh, the free app. It's everywhere. 
Uh, you can tell your smart speaker, smart device, you know, hey Alexa, turn on KDWB on iHeartRadio, and uh, she'll get it. Siri's a little, Siri's a little touchy. You know, you'll say, hey Siri, um, uh, turn on KDWB on iHeartRadio, and she'll say, I found several tattoo shops near you, and I'm like, what, what, what? So, but it works, and you know what? And you can listen to the show anywhere, and uh, you Even know, the show's a little bit different. For, I'm sorry? Even in the tattoo shop. <laughs> Even in the tattoo shop, no matter where you are. Uh, the show's been a little bit different. We've been doing, obviously, a lot of uh, you know social distancing. Um, uh, we're in different studios now. We used to be crammed in a little studio about the size of a small bedroom. And now they've got us in different studios. But we're kind of gradually, like everybody else in the country, kind of getting back to normal. So before I let you go, you know, do you have any parting shots, parting thoughts? I mean, we could talk all day, but I don't want to, you know, keep you on. You probably have to get to bed at some point in time. You get, you get up so ungodly early for your show. Well, you know, here's here's my schedule. I take a nap in the afternoon for like an hour or more. And then that way I stay up and I can watch like, you know, the news. I like to find out what's going on in the news. And then my late, my bedtime ritual lately, my wife and I watch Buzzer, the old game show network, and watch these old 1978, 79 versions of Let's Make a Deal and Super Password. And oh, there's awesome. just something, there's, you know, I read something somewhere that's like, there's something really comforting about watching old shows. And there really is, it's like, you know, yes. you watch all, it's like, oh yeah, that actor, he's dead. That host, he's dead. I don't know, but there's just something really comforting about it. So that's so anyway, I get plenty of sleep. I love my sleep. I love being up in the morning, but I love my sleep. Um, uh, but no, I'm, I'm the rest of the day. You know, it's 95 degrees here today, so it's a little wow. warm to be outside. Probably take the dog for a walk, you know, and um, I ride motorcycles now. I rode my motorcycle into work. Believe it or not, I have an electric powered skateboard. I was riding that around the neighborhood yesterday, oh, getting yeah. a lot of funny looks. I mean, imagine a guy our age on electric powered skateboard. I can't even imagine. Are you drunk? Do you have a life lock? Do you have one of those life thing bracelets where I fall and I can't get up? Do you have one of those first alert? Well, it's it's not exactly, but my Apple Watch does have like hard fall recognition. Good. So if if I take a hard fall and I don't move for like 30 seconds, it calls 911. So so I got that going. Gotta love technology. Well, great. All right, so parting thoughts. Anything you want to share with uh, with my group before we go? I don't want to get serious, but I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Because um, you are my buddy, yes, and sir. people will say, you know, well, you know, I don't see, and I've always kind of thought this, I don't see Marty as a black guy. He's just Marty. But then people said, no, I don't want to be seen as just that. I want to see be seen as a black American. So I know you can't speak for everybody, and everybody's got a different opinion, but what are your thoughts on that? Because I think us white people, we want to start to try to get this right. And I'll right. probably always think of you as like my buddy Marty, but tell me, is there should there be more to it than that? Well, I think what, I, what I'd like to be able to say is, it's not even so much the isolation of it or into I'm a black American or I'm Marty, just the recognition that there is a situation going on that we have to deal with as black men that many people don't. Because like I had also said in that post, I literally have to think about this every time I go out the door. Am I gonna get pulled over? Am I gonna get stopped? Am I gonna get profiled? I very well could just get roughed up for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. When I do get stopped by the cops, I do not move because I don't know which kind of cop I'm getting. Yeah. That's, that's everyday life for me. And I just try to function like normal people do. So it's not so much that I, I want people to consider me different, just consider the challenges that I have to go through to function on the same level that you do every day. That's what I tell people, because I, I've got to ground myself every day for whatever I've got to go out and do. And on top of that, there's this other thing, <laughs> this other thing I got to bring with me, right? You know, it's, it's always there. I try not to keep too much on it. I try to keep it as light as possible, but you know, I always talk to young men of color, say, you know, always be, always keep your head in a swivel. Don't necessarily talk at a turn if you don't need to, but that's, it's ridiculous because I'm also big on having a voice. But of course, if I get too much of a big voice and I get this all the time, if I get too excited and I start talking from my emotional heart, I become angry black man. 
No, I'm just emotional. I'm just talking about what I believe in. Why can't I just be an emotional and angry man? But it's that polarizing effect that people don't understand is something that follows us everywhere we go. So what I would say, um, as far as what to consider me as, I'm just Marty. That's got a pretty big shadow that follows me everywhere I go. I recognize it. I just don't let it define who I am. That's so interesting because Marty, I mean, we haven't talked much in the last, you know, 15 years or so, um, but this has never come up. You know, you and I would have never sat down at, yeah. um, at the, <laughs> what's that bowling alley that we went to? Bryant Lake Bowl. Yes. We would have never sat down there over a beer and said, so Marty, tell me about your life experiences as a black American. Would have would never have said, Dave, up. let's go bowling, shut up. Yeah, it would have never came up. It would have never came up. Right. But I think that that's one of the things that, you know, we can talk about at whatever level um, that that we can learn because Absolutely. if you never talked about it, I never brought it up. Well, how was I to know? How was I to know? Um, so I think that's one of the things that, you know, it's, and I'm not uncomfortable talking to you. Um, uh, so that's, a, you know, that's a good start for people like me is, you know, just to listen, just to talk and ask some questions. So yeah. if those and, questions and, are welcome, and I appreciate you reaching out that, that time you did, because literally, I tell people, if you don't ask me, who are you going to ask? I and mean, when I did work in news initially, before I got into promotion, when I worked at, uh, at Gannett Station in Denver, I, I was part of the news discussion a lot of times when we came into racially sensitive stories being covered. And I'd be the only face of color in the room. I'm glad I was there, because if I wasn't there, how would they have a real true discussion on how that story would impact the general community? You know? Yeah. So I don't mind ever talking about it. I think it's it's important. I encourage any other black men that I meet to have the same kind of open mindset as well. I mean, a lot of times they it's it comes across as they're already ready to be defensive. They already got the dukes up. No, be open. Because a lot of times you don't know how to approach. I try to diffuse a lot with humor. I tell most of the people that know me well, use the humor with just me, because if you use the humor that I use with you in the wrong neighborhood, it might cause you a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't want anybody to get jacked, but uh, <laughs> just try to just keep it open. Absolutely. But I appreciate that's a good question. Yeah. Well, Marty, I, I appreciate your chance to be on here. And hey. um, I'm going to make sure I tell everybody who listens to our show to check yeah. out your show. So when we get done here, I want to find out exactly where to find this so I can post this up on my blog and um, I'll uh, you know, copy of it. yeah, I'll so cool. It too. Marty, let's do it again, man. I mean, um, you know, I don't see myself getting up to Eugene, Oregon, but if I kept track right, uh, you are down one beer, so you need to buy me the next beer. It's been a while, but that's the way I remember it. And I have actually, it's interesting, I've got some good friends that are making the move to Minneapolis. They're moving to the cities in about three months, and I said, perfect. I now have a reason to go back. So yeah. at least I'll have some place to stay. Cause I, I just can't say, show up at your house and say, hey Dave. Are you talking about here? Yeah. <laughs> We're busy that day. <laughs> Get the room ready, man. I'll be there. Sometime next year, I might come out and visit. You'll, you'll be surprised. I'd love to see you. All right, buddy. All right, well, so folks, this has been me with Dave Ryan. I appreciate Dave you being on. If you guys want to be on with me for a coffee talk, I'll put the information in the chat box, our little comment box there on how to do that and also information on how to get to Dave's uh, iHeartRadio and also his podcast as well. Dave, thanks again and I'll talk to you soon, buddy. All right, Marty, take care. All right, you too. Love you. Love, love you back.